All right, so today we're going to be talking about the inguinal canal. Um, this is something that uh, a lot of people get confused about, and I'm not a big memorizer of lists, so um, when you're thinking about the walls of the inguinal canal, I really had a hard time memorizing them until I kind of came up with a way of thinking about it that was a little bit different. Um, actually, you have to think back to how the inguinal uh, canal is formed as uh, a fetus. So in, in the adult, we'll just start with, um, let's say this is your pelvis here. Okay, this is your pubic tubercle. This is your uh, superior anterior iliac spine. Let's just label. Uh, pubic tubercle. And then everyone knows the inguinal ligament kind of goes like this between the superior anterior iliac spine and uh, the pubic tubercle. Um, but uh, really this this ligament isn't just a freestanding little piece of of tendon. It is uh, is formed up from the rolled up border of the external oblique muscle. And remember the fibers kind of run here and the aponeurosis kind of starts the tendon. This aponeurosis starts here. And if you can imagine if this tendon kind of did one of these, it was coming down on the abdominal wall and rolled in on itself. And this part becomes very thickened and becomes the uh, inguinal ligament. So, the way I like to think about it is as if it were a hernia. So you've got kind of four layers to start with here. You've got the external oblique, the internal oblique, the transversalis muscle, and the transversalis fascia. And what happens when a hernia occurs is something pushes through all these layers and takes them with them, creating a hernia sac, right? So what you get is this multi-layer contraption where there's an inner hernia sac and then all the different layers get pushed out with it. Okay? So the same thing happens when the inguinal ligament for, or the inguinal canal forms, but it doesn't happen at this you know 90 degree angle. It happens at a much uh, much different angle, almost in the plane of the tissue. So if we remember the external oblique forms the floor of the inguinal canal because it forms the inguinal ligament. What we can do is kind of take this and turn it on its axis. Say this is the medial border and this is the lateral border. We can draw it a little bit more like this instead. So let's pretend this is the transversalis fascia which is becomes the uh, processus vaginalis and then the external oblique kind of comes like this, internal oblique kind of comes like this and this forms your superficial ring and, oh sorry, your superficial ring will form out here and your deep ring will form out here and you can see why this transversalis fascia becomes the posterior wall and the aponeurosis of the external oblique and the internal oblique become the superior or the anterior walls and the transversalis fascia becomes the uh, oh I forgot one layer in there sorry guys uh, that's the transversalis the transversalis fascia becomes the posterior wall and then you have to kind of flip it you know you flip your view 90 degrees to see that uh, this would be the external oblique and then your two muscles the uh, internal oblique and the um, uh, the transversalis become the roof and then these guys right here become the conjoint tendon because the uh, superficial ring exit or is, is placed very close to the pubic tubercle so as long as you can remember um, the layers of the abdominal wall you can kind of figure out uh, based on that where the layers, the anterior and the posterior walls of the inguinal canal are 
Um, and you always got to remember that, you know, none of these layers ever disappear. They just become something else. Because, like you said, in a hernia, all the, all the layers get taken with it as they pouch out. So if you can imagine the testicle and the scrotum, all the layers are still there. Except the testicle kind of rides outside the process vaginalis and is wrapped up kind of in it like that. So um, what happens is it gets, originally it was open and then this kind of obliterated and then it would come out in the abdominal wall like that. And when you get an inguinal hernia, they say it's due to a patent process vaginalis. Well, that's because this, this where the spermatic cord would be in the vessels and, and uh, everything that's traveling inside, is supposed to get obliterated. Um, but say this opened up, say something could push in through there, then you would get something that looks kind of like that with the spermatic cord running down in your testicle here and a little bit more of the patent process vaginalis. These are technically connected. And then all the layers that go around it. Like that. So that would be your testicle, this would be your patent process vaginalis. Opening up and here you would get like a loop of bowel or something that would come into here and cause a hernia. Alright? Well. Let me know if you all have any questions.